Doc. I hope everything is going good with you, and I hope everything is going good with yours. We got another week of life, hopefully, to live, and we had a bleak week that just passed. So let's get into some of the things. But I want to start off by saying there's so much to live for. Anybody going through anything where you don't think that life is worth living, get some help, reach out to some people, do whatever you have to do. Take some time, reflect before you harm somebody or harm yourself, because this could be permanent. Some things we don't come back from. You know what? I want you to have the same desire to say that you have so much to live for that I have. Because I have things that I have not yet accomplished. I have an end goal in life. I want to live a complete and full life. There is a lot of unfinished business. There's a lot of words that I have not yet said that I need to say before I live this life. There are goals that I'm aiming for. I have other stuff to give to others. I have other stuff left in me to give to others, to add into others' lives, and so do you. Now, we understand we can't be aging. We can't be father time, but you live while you're alive. You breathe while you're breathing, and you give everything that you have to everything you do. Don't be lukewarm about anything. Be hot for it. Be on fire or be exactly cold. Be ice cold or fire. Don't sit in the middle. There's nothing in the middle that is worthwhile for you or anybody. You can't really accomplish any goals sitting in the middle, sitting on the fence, playing in between. It's just not the way life works. So remember that you got so much to live for. Look at those people who care about you. Look at yourself. Look at the damage that you would do to others if you ever did anything to harm yourself or if you ever freaked out and harmed other people who have never done anything to you. And that's basically all I wanted to say. I mean, life is beautiful. It's what you make it. It's how deep you dig into it. I mean, do you want to battle? Sure, it's going to be a battle. But do you have what it takes to battle through? And at the end of your day, say, you know what? This was a pretty good life I lived. If it ends fast, if it ends way too young, at least you gave it your all. And you don't have that stinking word that I hate so much called regret. So Donald Trump testified in his civil fraud trial. And you know he was cantankerous. He was nasty. He was mean. Then his daughter testified and she acted like she didn't recall anything. I'm surprised she remembered her full name. We still have this Israel Hamas thing or Israel slash Palestine thing going on. Israel refuses to cease fire. They're trying to talk about some temporary four hour window daily, which is not a lot of time to do anything when you're talking about older people, women and children. America and Joe Biden in particular has been a real bitch on this situation. He's been a coward. He's been a punk ass. And I back this man. I voted for this man. I hate to say, but I did vote for this man because the alternative was worse. And I hate that we're in a position in this country where you pick the lesser of two evils because Joe Biden kowtowing and not standing out here and saying, I hate what's going on. You know what? He has the right as a human being before he's a president of the United States. He's a soul filled human being. And maybe his soul is weak. Maybe his soul is cowardice. Maybe his soul is not built up to a man of his age and stature where it should be. Because he should be saying this is an abomination. We cannot have another child die. If you want to kill those who came after you in a warlike manner, the world has wars. Even biblically, wars are something that has gone on with man since the beginning of time. But you don't kill women and children, man. You just don't. So Friday, we have a threat of another government shutdown. The deadline is Friday. 
I'm hoping that this new House Speaker and the GOP and the Democrats can get together and come to some kind of bipartisan agreement so that the government does not shut down, that we have the proper funding for those who need it, that the military continues to get paid, and things of that nature. Because what kind of country would we be sending out billions of dollars to others to fight, but we're not willing to sit down and make sure that billions of dollars are spent here to feed, to clothe, and to shelter? So the FBI agents had to stop New York City Mayor Eric Adams in the middle of the street and seize his his iPad after they raided his chief fundraiser's home over bribes, something to do with some Turkish builders or constructors or something like that. I'm still not trying to understand how New York City, which is supposed to be a liberal city, is so homophobic, so sexist, that they couldn't put a woman in office as the mayor of the city. And instead, they chose a former detective. Now, this is a city that lived through the Rudy Giuliani years, the Mike Bloomberg years, where the cops were heavy-handed, and Eric Adams was a member of that particular police force. There is no way in the world I would have ever voted for Eric Adams to be a door catcher because he was a part of the problem. He was not a part of the solution, and he has not been an answer to any good question when it relates to New York City since he has been mayor of that city. So I watched a documentary called Robbie Williams. Naturally, it's about Robbie Williams. Excuse me. Robbie Williams, the British rock star, pop star, whatever you want to call him. It was a four-parter. It was very interesting. Uh, this thing goes through the ups and downs of people who achieve a great deal of success. First, he had a success as you would call it a young man, boy band. I believe it was Take This or something like that or Take That. Then he went on to be Robbie Williams, the pop star. But it dealt with his drug addiction. It dealt with his psychosis. It dealt with his insecurities. It just lets you know that you could have all this adoring fans. You can have all this money. You could have all this fame. And you could still be truly unhappy. So you have to figure out what is it in life that makes it worth living for for you. And it seems like he's... At the end, he's come to some kind of agreement that he's willing to live for his wife and four children. So I want to say congratulations to Tracy Chapman for becoming the very first black songwriter to win Song of the Year in the CMA history, in their 56-year history. Tracy Chapman wrote this song 35 years ago, Fast Car. That album by Tracy Chapman to me was a a masterpiece album. It was my introduction to Tracy. Uh, I believe that every song on that CD record album, whatever you want to call it, was good. It was good enough to listen to. It made you think about all kinds of different things. I thought that Tracy Chapman, Terrence Trent Darby, and at the time, if you want to even say it, Lenny Kravitz, caught pure hell from the black community because they were the fodder of jokes by all kinds of black comedians and in living color wrecked them on a weekly monthly basis i mean they gave them no respect they acted like these people were clowns and these were good performers uh i'm glad that tracy has found her lane i'm glad that Terrence has found his lane and as we all know Lenny has definitely found his lane because they deserved better than what they were getting at this particular time from the black community which supported them not one iota so the Big Ten suspended Jim Harbaugh for the last three games of the season because Michigan football allegedly were involved in some sign stealing but Michigan went on to beat Penn State in a big game this weekend, which I watched the first half of 24 to 15. Penn State didn't really show up at all. They played some decent defense, but it was pretty much a boring game. And besides, I moved on to the Arizona-Colorado game, which Colorado lost 34 to 31. 
Uh, Colorado has been on a hell of a losing streak lately. They have not had a good uh, end to their season after a very promising start. Dion needs to work on some things there. He needs to stop finger pointing. He needs to start looking at himself. I mean, is he a celebrity who just happens to have assistant coaches and he's playing the role as an actor of a coach? Or is he a coach? And we're not talking about motivational speaking here. That is not going to win football games. Motivational speaking is not going to win you college football games at the Division I level. You need somebody who can coach, handle timeouts, player personnel. You know, if you know sports, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and, and by the way, this is Jim Harbaugh's second suspension in one season. Uh, it doesn't look good for Jim. It doesn't look good for the University of Michigan. Uh the alumni are acting a fool. You got people like uh, Jalen Rose out there. Nobody's asking for his opinion on football and what's going on in this sign stealing deal. You got Desmond Howard who embarrassed himself Friday on sports shows by just basically saying, you know what? So what they're cheating? It's no big deal. How dare you uh, come after him? He's a friend. I mean, that's not the way you do this. When when did we get to the point in this world where right is wrong and wrong is right and nobody cares about the difference between the two? So the UFC had a card this weekend, and it was a pretty good card. Uh, Jared Jordan defeated Mark Matson in the first round on by TKO on punches. Matson's a good wrestler, but he's getting up there in age. I thought that was pretty good fight. Uh, Jarrett caught him nicely. I mean, you had some Roosevelt Roberts got submitted by Armbar in the first round, but he took this fight on short notice. But Taz Rebecca uh, was the actual person who submitted him. You had Lupe Godinez defeat Tabitha Ricci by split decision. I really thought that Ricci won this fight, but they gave it to Lupe. I mean, one of the judges actually scored it. 30-27, which was, to me, insane. All three rounds did not go to Lupe, but you know how that goes there. Denise St. Benoit St. Denise defeated Matt Favela by knockout with a head kick in the first round. Jesse Andrade defeated Mackenzie Dern by punches in the second round. Tom Aspinall is now your interim heavyweight champion. He beat Sergey Pavlovich by knockout. Alex Pereira defeated Yari Pachovich Projector by with elbows in the second round to win the vacant lightweight title. So all in all, this was a very good card from MSG. Naturally, you had the side show at MSG. You had Donald Trump, Kid Rock. What is this other idiot's name? Dana White and uh, Tucker Carlson make an entrance and the people go crazy. I am I don't even recognize that New York, but I'm thinking these are bridge and tunnel people who are coming in from Pennsylvania, coming in from parts of Jersey. I don't believe this was hardcore five barrel New Yorkers who are all of a sudden loving Trump when this is the same man they vilified and booed and and stuff like that in front of his own Trump Tower. So it is what it is. Next week in UFC has a card. It's going to be Brendan Allen in the main event going up against Paul Craig. That should be good. Michael Morales is taking on Jake Matthews. Chase Hooper is going up against Jordan, Jordan Lovett. That fight should be very interesting. These are two up-and-coming young guys. Jordan Levitt is a very weird dude, but he's a very good fighter, so I'm going to enjoy that. Luna Pahara is fighting Amanda Rebus. Johnny Parsons is taking Euros Medic. Uh, you got Cesar Almada is taking on Christian Leroy Duncan. Mick Parkin is taking on C.O. Machada. Trey Ogden is taking on Nicholas Mata. Charles Johnson is taking on Rafael 
Estevam. So that should be a pretty good card. It's a regular UFC card. I'm not sure if it's going to be on UFC. I mean, ESPN Plus, ABC, or ESPN. But I'm sure if you look it up, you'll be able to find that out on your own. Now, something very weird. The 76ers player, Kelly Uber Jr., was struck and hit by a car in Center City on Saturday evening. Thankfully, Mr. Uve is fine because they released him from the hospital. Can't be anything too devastating if you've been released from the hospital. But somebody had posted a day or two before something about he deserves to get hit by a car, and then it came to fruition. So I find that weird, and I'm sure whoever that person is is being investigated. They're probably going back to see who initially posted that tweet. I mean, it, that's just a bizarre situation. Uh, you know what? Sometimes we take sports too serious. Sports is sports. It's a form of entertainment just involving athletics. I mean, you are still going to eat the same dinner that you had unless you gambled all your money away. You're going to live in the same place that you live. You're going to drive the same car that you drive if your team wins or if your team loses. The kids are going to still be your same kid. That woman or man is still going to be the same man or woman. We take shit too serious, especially when it comes to sports. And I guess that's why they call them fanatics, right? So let me just give you what I think are the NBA games of the week. I like to do that. It's it's up to you if you watch them. I don't go deep into the NBA. If there's news, I, I talk about it. But I do like to give the games of the week. Tonight, you got the Knicks going into Boston to take the Celtics on. Tomorrow, you got my Spurs going to OKC. You got Dallas going into New Orleans. So that should be a really good game. You got Luka and Kyrie going in there to play Zion. You got the Clippers with the LA Four going in to play the champion Denver Nuggets. Wednesday, you got the Knicks going into Atlanta to play Trey Young. You got Boston going up to Philly. Uh, that should be, you know, Boston and Philly is a rivalry. It should be a good game. You got the Bucks going into Toronto to play the Raptors. Thursday, you got the Nets going to Miami to play the Heat. You got OKC going in to play Golden State. Friday, you got the 76ers going against Atlanta. You got the up-and-coming Kings going against my Spurs and Wimbenyama. And you also have the Nuggets taking on New Orleans. You got the Phoenix Suns, who I don't know if they're completely healthy or not. I don't know when Booker's due back, but they're taking on the Utah Jazz. Saturday, you got the Mavericks playing the Bucks. That should be interesting. Dillard and Giannis versus Luka and Irving. You got Memphis Gribblers who I wouldn't have on this list because they don't have John Moran, but it's because they're playing the San Antonio Spurs. As many times as you can get to see Victor Webinyama on his first go-round in the NBA, I think you should do it. Sunday, you got the 76ers taking on the Nets. You got the Suns taking on the Jazz. And you got the Rockets going up against the Los Angeles Lakers, who I believe LeBron has already said he has some form of an injury. I don't know how long he's going to be out. I knew this was going to happen. He never stays healthy. Anthony Davis never stays healthy. The window of opportunity for LeBron to ever win a championship, especially with L.A., is over, people. The only way LeBron wins a championship is if he gloms on to an already built squad and he could be that piece that comes in and takes like days off at a time because as much as people want to make him out to be Superman, he's a 38 going on 39 year old man who has a lot of wear and tear on that body. So Daniel Jones towards ACL last week and he will be out for the rest of the season. The Rams actually went out and wasted time, energy, and money and signed Carson Wentz. My Dallas Cowboys signed Martavius Bryant, uh, and this was a dude who was suspended indefinitely since 2018, but he's six foot four, 210 pounds, and 31 years old. So 
if he has anything left in the tank, maybe by uh, week 14 or 15, we can incorporate him into the offense. And in the red zone, he could help with that height. Now, here's what happened in the NFL this week. Again, Dante Freeman ran for a touchdown. And the Bears actually benefited by beating the Carolina Panthers. They have Carolina Panthers' number one pick in the draft. And right now, with the Carolina Panthers sitting at either one and eight or one and nine, Chicago is going to look into the number one pick in the draft because the Par- Carolina Panthers stink. We had. Jonathan Taylor rushed for a touchdown, and the Colts held off the Patriots 10-6 to in Germany. Those poor people who are getting these European games, they're not getting the very best of what we have. I don't know. Maybe we need to send these people over a week in advance so that they're acclimated. Uh, jet lag is off of them. They went out, seen the town, seen the new countries. They got to partying out their system. And the last three or four days, they could focus on football. Instead of arriving in these countries two or three nights before the game, worn out, having already played a game the previous weekend. And so they're not getting the best that they can get. You know, I feel a little bad for Matt Jones. Once again, Bill Belichick. Benches this kid on a drive that maybe he could have led them to the win. But I, he seems toast. And Matt Jones' time in New England is definitely over, people. But I believe Bill Belichick should be man enough at this point in time to actually tell everybody, I am retiring at the end of the season so he can get all his flowers as he makes this one lap, last lap around the NFL He still has seven games. He can get a lot of love from a lot of different locations. He can get some honors and then move away from the game. If you want to, if you want to go into a booth, then do it. If not, I mean, I'm thinking the man is approaching upper 60s to maybe 70. Maybe you just want to go get on a boat and chill with your seven rings, dude. Deshaun Watson rallied the Browns from 14 down in the fourth quarter to beat the Ravens 33 to 31. Lamar Jackson threw a pick six late in the game. I mean, that AFC North is a beast between Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Baltimore. I think it's the best division from top to bottom in football. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Green Bay Packers 23-19. This was nothing very special. Nobody had any outlandish numbers or anything like that. But Pittsburgh seems to be holding on to do what they need to do. And right now they're shocking me at 6-3 and three record. I cannot even believe it. C.J. Stroud, 356 yards, one touchdown, one interception. His first NFL interception after nine weeks of playing professional football. That's kind of amazing for a rookie. He has 14 touchdowns to one interception, and it took to week nine to get the first one. He also ran for a touchdown, and he led a game-winning drive, and the Texans beat the Bengals 30-27 to on a last-second field goal. Now, the problem here is Burrow threw two interceptions. And Cincinnati Bengals, which I had winning this division, are right now in last place in the AFC North with a 5-4 and four record. The Vikings beat the Saints 27-19 for their fifth straight win. This Joshua Dobbs was brilliant in the first half. I mean, he looked really good. Uh, The Vikings slowed down in the second half. Jameis Winston threw two touchdowns, but he threw a late INT, and that was it. I mean, the Vikings seem to have turned this thing around. The Vikings also need to look at Joshua Dobbs as maybe being their quarterback next year as opposed to going back to Kirk Cousins. Uh, This kid... Seems to have that team in his hand. They seem to believe in him. It's a it's a great thing to watch. He's not a rookie. He's been a journeyman for a while. But you know what? He beat the Dallas Cowboys this year. He's won back-to-back games for the Vikings since he's been in town. And he's only been in town for less than 14 days. 
The 49ers looked like the 49ers all of a sudden yesterday. They demolished the Jaguars, who I picked to actually win this game, 34 to 3. And it ended a three game skid for them. Brock Purdy was back. He threw for 296 yards and three touchdowns. Kittles had three catches for 116 yards and one touchdown. McCafferty had a McCafferty game. He had 142 yards total, but his streak of consecutive games with a touchdown ended at 17 games. Now, that 17 games also included the playoffs, and he is still tied for the record of all-time consecutive games with Lenny Moore. Baker Mayfield threw for 278 yards, two touchdowns to lead the Buccaneers and help uh, in the four-game losing streak for them. They beat the Titans 20-6. to Mike Evans had a monster game. He had six catches for 143 yards and one touchdown. Kyler Murray is back from his ACL injury, and he, had, he led a game-winning drive. And the Cardinals beat the Falcons 25-33. He looked like that hamster out there. He looked good. He looked strong. He looked just as indecisive as he always does. But he was jetting around. He was moving. You couldn't see any ill effects. And you know what? Congratulations to Kyla. Jeffrey Goff. Jared Goff threw for 333 yards and two touchdowns. And the, like, the Lions beat the Chargers 41-38. This was the offensive game of the day. Uh, this kid Patterson hit a last-second field goal. The Lions running back David Montgomery ran for 116 yards on 12 carries, including a long 75-yard touchdown. Amon Ross St. Brown had his career day at 156 yards receiving on eight catches and one touchdown. Keenan Allen had 11 catches for 175 yards and two touchdowns. Justin Herbert competed 27 out of 40 passes for 323 yards and four touchdowns, but he had an interception. So this was your stat-filled game that made up for some of the games that didn't have a lot of players have individual go-offs. This had a game with a lot of people going off. My Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott had five touchdowns, and the Cowboys destroyed the Giants again this season, 49-17. They beat the Giants earlier this season, 40 to zip. So they have scored 89-17 to in two games this season against the Giants. This was the 12th straight home win for the Dallas Cowboys. And by the way, Dak Prescott, Due for 404 yards, four touchdowns with one interception, plus he had one rushing touchdown. C.D. Lamb had 11 catches for 151 yards and one touchdown, and he became the first NFL receiver with at least 10 catches for at least 150 yards in three consecutive games. Brandon Cooks got involved in the offense. Thank you, Mike McCarthy. Thank you, Dak Pescott. And thank you, Brandon Cooks. He had nine catches for 173 yards and one touchdown. Geno Smith went 369 yards and two touchdowns. And Jason Myers hit a walk-off field goal that led the Seahawks past the Commanders 29-26. The Jets lost to the Las Vegas Raiders 16 to 12 in pretty much a snooze fest. Uh, you can believe what you want to believe about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is so much more special than every other human being that he can come back from a ruptures of Tilly's in three to four months because he's now promising he'll be back in December. I never believed that the injury was what they said it was. And if that's the case, why aren't we talking about Daniel Jones getting this surgery? Why aren't we talking about Kurt Cousins getting this surgery? He has made it bad on other professional athletes who might legitimately have ruptured tendons. Achilles tendons, and they need that 11-month recovery time. And they're going to want to know, how is a 39-year-old get out there so fast and it's taking you forever to do it? Now, here's the games for next week. 
Thursday night game, you got the Cincinnati Bengals coming off a disappointing loss. The Baltimore Ravens coming off a disappointing loss. Both divisional rivals, but the game is in Baltimore. Uh, this is a really hard game to pick, but I'm going to go with, I don't know, man. This is a, Baltimore always seems to find a way when they do lose to lose in the fourth quarter because they've been winning in every game. And the Cincinnati Bengals have the firepower, but I'm going to take the Ravens at home to win this game. You got Pittsburgh going into Cleveland. I think Cleveland has more offense than Pittsburgh, so I'm going to take Cleveland to win this game. You got the Bears going into Detroit to play the Lions. The Lions are not going to uh, take this as a sleeper. They're not going to take it as a little brother in the division. Lions win this game. The Chargers will beat Green Bay in Green Bay. The Raiders are going into Miami. The Raiders don't have the offense to handle the Dolphins. The Dolphins win. The Giants are going into Washington to play the Commanders. The Commanders is just a more rounded, better team. My Cowboys are going to Carolina to play the Panthers. And unless they just go to sleep, the Cowboys should beat Carolina by at least two touchdowns. The Titans are going into Jacksonville to play a should-be angry Jacksonville Jaguar team. I'm taking Jacksonville. The Cardinals are going into Houston. I believe in Houston right now. I believe in C.J. Stroud. I'm taking the Texans. Tampa Bay is going into San Francisco. And if San Francisco plays even three quarters of the way that they played yesterday, I got the 49ers winning this game. The Jets are going into Buffalo. Buffalo needs every victory they can get. They're at home. They should beat the Jets. The Seahawks are going to take on the Rams. Seahawks win one on the road. The Vikings are going into Denver. I believe that the Vikings are just better than Denver at this point. And you got a that Viking Denver is the Sunday night game. And your Monday night game is the Eagles going into Kansas City to play the Chiefs. Now that should be a bond burner. I think the Kansas City Chiefs hold serve at home. This is a repeated Super Bowl. And I think that we're going to have a game that's going to kind of mirror what we've seen at the Super Bowl. Next week, your bye teams are going to be Atlanta. Indianapolis, New England, and New Orleans. Once again, people, there's so much to live for. Find your reasons, even if you got to write them down, if you need to plaster them on the wall to remind yourself, if you need to send yourself daily confirmations, I don't care. The alternative to life is death. And are you really prepared for everything that death and the finality of it all? Are you prepared for that? Are you really truly prepared for that? Have you prepared your family? Have you prepared your children? Have you prepared your life insurance and where things should go and how they should be done? Are you still worried about how, how your wife's going to be, how your husband's going to be, who's going to take care of your dog, your pets or whatever. Live, live, live is a joy. It's going to be trials. It's going to be tribulations. It's going to be bad days. It's going to be some good days. It's how you take them, take them all with a grain of salt and enjoy. Feel blessed. Be thankful. I Appreciate you listening in. I appreciate you every time that you do that. I love your comments. I like when you share and I love when you subscribe, but do it organically, not because I ask you. It's not a command, it's not a demand. It's just something that I appreciate. Uh, I love hearing from most of all. That's the thing that I enjoy most feedback. Feedback is what fills the mind. It fills the soul. It lets me know how I'm doing. What am I saying? Is it resonating with anyone? I mean, you could easily click a, a sub subscribe button, but that, that, that doesn't let me know what you think. That doesn't let me know what you think about what I'm saying or how you feel about how I say things. Do you think I'm nasty? Do you think I say things too softly? Do you, do you think I'm too harsh? I don't know. I like to hear these things. It opens up my eyes because I'm not a know-it-all. I just come up with suggestions. The topics that I come up with to start the show are just suggestions. That's all they are. 
they're not demands or rules or regulations. They might be for me, but the way you live your life is the way you live your life. I am not in control of that. And uh, I'm just going to tell you, like I tell you each and every time, people, peace to you and peace to yours.